Well, good morning to the wonderful people of Jerusalem Baptist Church. I am Reverend Dorian Daniels, and I am grateful to God to have this blessed privilege to come to you and say what thus saith the Lord. I'm also grateful to those who had a hand in granting me this opportunity. I say thank you. If you have your Bibles, if you would turn with me to Nehemiah chapter 2, and we're only going to read one uh, verse of scripture. Um, in your leisure time, you can read the whole text. But Nehemiah chapter 2, beginning at verse 8, reads, And a letter to Aspa, the keeper of the king's forest, uh, directing him to give me timber to take beams for the gates of the temple fortress and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked for the gracious hand of my God was upon me. And a letter to Aspa, the keeper of the king's forest, directing him to give me timber to make beams for the gates of the temple for fortress and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked for. The gracious hand of my God was upon me. Shall we pray? Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. May my soul look up to thee with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. God, we need a word from you because we are living in some perilous times, but you left us a promise that the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of our God shall remain forever. Now send forth your word through these mortal lips of clay. In Jesus' name, amen. For the times that is ours to share, I would like to invite us to think from this sermonic thought, continuing to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us. Continuing to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us. We are living in a time when our families, the church, our communities, cities, states, nation, and the world are facing the crumbling of walls that once provided stability. We saw the walls of our democracy fall this past week as we witnessed the insurrection, seditious behavior, and domestic terrorist attack on our house, the Capitol, because of people falsely building their life and faith, not with God, but in a person who spews evil, who spews evil hatred and racist theories. These posturing patriots of American democracy have vested in holding to the hands of a sinful leader who does not have anyone's best interest at heart but his own. When we examine our personal lives to some degree, we could agree that all of us need to go through a process of renewing our faith. Many of our faith meters are either running on low or next to empty. I'm sure that there are people, places, and things in our lives that we need to re-examine in 2021 to see if they are worth having around anymore. If we tell the truth, we need to do some repairing of broken relationships in 2021. Many of us need to renew our outlook on life in 2021. We need to know that life is worth more than the material things of this world. We need to replace the way we view ourselves. We need to see our people like women and men created for a purpose called to be in a loving relationship with God who loves us all. The negative narratives of 2020 have made themselves into 2021 and consumed 
much of our lives and have dried up the energy needed to continue to nurture our faith with God whose hands have been upon us. These negative thoughts are swirling in many of our heads. These harmful files have seemingly made themselves a home in the databases of our hearts. The files, we are not worth anything because our family in some people's eyes was not worth anything. The broken record of broken promises, the constant reminders of the various traumatizing violations we have sustained in our lives, the files of church hurt and conflict that has ruined our outlook on the church. These harmful files have caused many of us to lose hope, give up, and allow our faith to sink to shallow levels for some almost evaporate. These negative narratives have become so ingrained in many of our psyches that they have become hard to delete. Due to us finding it hard to delete them, we have allowed them to morph themselves into what we say is our true essence and identity. And we nurture our false identity rather than continuing to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us. And allow me the opportunity to say that I sometimes need my faith nurtured and renewed while sometimes barely continuing to hold to the hands of God which are upon me. I still wrestle with stigmas feelings of inadequacy and feelings of I do not have what it takes. There are times when I feel like a fish out of water. The trauma of my life can sometimes get in my head and make me doubt the God who's called me to this work. And I know I'm not the only one that can say the trauma of 2020 and before has many of us feeling drained and worn out that nurturing our faith with God whose hands are upon us and has guided us from the time of our birth to this present moment has become an enormous challenge even though God continues to beckon us to continue to move forward with God in 2021. However, with all of our struggles, I still believe that the Bible is our resource. Therefore, here we find in our text today, Nehemiah willing to listen to God and a Nehemiah who allowed God to use him to help renew his people's faith. Nehemiah who was burdened by his people's plights, their hopelessness allowed God to drive Nehemiah to see the broken walls and become a vessel willing to help the people re-engage in nurturing their relationship with God whose hands were upon Nehemiah and them. The broken world around uh, Nehemiah moved him. God and the king loved Nehemiah. Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king. Nehemiah's job was making sure that the king was getting the best wine and that nothing the king drank would be poisonous. Nehemiah had come to Jerusalem because he had heard about the plight of the city. Nehemiah was moved to renew the Israelites' faith who lived in Jerusalem because he saw and felt their pain, their shame, and dishonor. When Nehemiah arrives on the scene, he saw the injustices, oppression, and evil. Nehemiah saw firsthand how the government had ruined the city, taken it, and polluted it with foreign images 
privileges and God. The walls were broken, destroyed, and beyond simple patchwork, the people and the community stood in desperate need of hope healing and their faith renewed. Nehemiah understood that the poor Israelites needed healing and walls required rebuilding. However, I want to offer up my Christian friends that beyond the walls needing repair and people needing hope restored, I want to suggest and offer that the real concern for rebuilding the walls was not necessarily about physical security from potential enemies. I want to lift my friends that this portion of Nehemiah chapter 2 is really about God calling us to restore and re-nurture God's will, desires, and reign in our lives. This rebuilding of walls is symbolic, can I argue my case, is symbolic of our relationship with God. This text, my Christian friends, is a reflection of of what it means to restore and nurture God's love, nurture the spiritual disciplines of God's grace and peace and justice and love and joy and mercy in our lives, in the church, in our communities and our world. This text seeks for us to nurture and restore and strengthen our relationship with God. And let me encourage someone that nurturing our faith with God is not about gimmicking or paying God to help us amass some kind of wealth. Nurturing our faith with God is not about God helping us to become connected to the right social connections, helping us to live in the right neighborhoods and attend the right schools, but continuing to nurture our faith with God means constantly yielding our total selves to God, continuing to nurture our faith with God challenges us to release the past pain that holds us from building a healthy, nurturing, vulnerable, and authentic relationship with God, our neighbors, and the world. God wants us to rebuild the walls of better role models for the next generation. God wants us to rebuild walls that righteously looks at all people as children created and loved by God. The text challenges us to rebuild walls of love, rebuild walls of justice, rebuild walls of grace, rebuild walls of peace in a world that has grown madly in love with itself and in love with degrading versus loving. The hymn writer said, breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew that I I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, until I am wholly thine. Till all this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. And I came to preach to Jerusalem and to someone listening to me that God in 2021 is challenging each of us collectively and and personally to continue to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us. However, the question is how 
Do we continue to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us? We can continue to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us when we recognize, here's the point, that God's hands are the power source to help us to continue to nurture our relationship with God God's hands are the power source to help us to continue to nurture our relationship with God. When Nehemiah finally arrives in Jerusalem, he sees the gates burn down. People's lives are a mess. People have turned to the worship of other gods and goddesses. They replaced the worship of Yahweh with the worship of Aspa and other foreign gods. There is corruption happening amongst leaders and governmental officials. God's chosen city was in a place of disrepair and needed renewal. Israel needed help to return to nurturing their relationship with God whose hands were upon Nehemiah who yielded his hands to God to help him become the trumpet used to sound the call to the people that returning to the basics of nurturing their faith with God whose hands had guided them from times of the exodus to this moment is of utmost importance and this text challenges us to see how nurturing our faith seems an essential lesson that is challenging us to continue to work toward uh, building our faith with God while holding to God's hands which are upon us because our communities need us. Little boys and girls need us because they are being set up as early as the third grade for prison because educational walls have been torn down. The walls of affordable child care have been torn down. The nurturing of children with mothers and fathers in a godly home actively involved in the life of their children have been torn down. The prison system has seemingly captured all of our young men and women, especially our young males of black and brown hue. God desires my sisters and brothers our blinders to come off and make a commitment to sticking to building and nurturing our faith holding like Nehemiah did to God's hand which was upon him and us who is the power source to provide and rejuvenate us with whatever spiritual nutrients we need to keep modeling and being the examples that God is calling each of us to continue to become. God is challenging us, my friends, to deal with our hidden pain, face our spiritual maladies, because the walls and the renewing and nurturing of our faith cannot happen with the same eyes. We need fresh eyes in 2021. We need fresh eyes to see that a more unbiased federal justice department can become a reality as we continue to see injustices happen like in the recent ruling in the Jacob Blake case. African American male left paralyzed after an officer involved shooting in Kenosha Wisconsin. New eyes to believe and see the history of this congregation continuing to be written as the Holy Spirit is working to reveal whom God has as the shepherd to help Jerusalem as a whole and the members individually to continue to nurture 
nurture their faith. I said we need new eyes that love more than judge. Eyes that are willing to hold our leaders accountable for egregious actions that jeopardize our lives and democracy. Like in this, like in this recent fiasco that these senators and our outgoing occupant and his last effort to overturn the election. Eyes that are willing to see and acknowledge the ruins but becoming Bolden to partner with God and hold to God's hands which are upon us as we seek God on how to go about refortifying, nurturing, and rebuilding the foundations of our lives, communities, families, the church post-COVID, and this nation. We need new eyes that become unafraid to tell our young people the truth about the streets, life, in the drug game and prison. We need to continue to nurture our faith while holding upon God's unchanging hands. Marion Wright Elderman an American activist for children, a president and founder of the Children's Defense Fund said, and I quote, if we don't stand up for children, then we don't stand for much. And we need to walk together versus walking, thinking with the click and mob mentality. And it's about I, me, my, mind's mentality. We cannot continuously allow fear and the demonic device of Talk, spewing from our nation's halls and leaders uh, to keep us from stepping uh, and nurturing relationships with other sisters and brothers all together nurturing our faith to stand up for what is right uh, and a real moral agenda we have to go we have to see then we have to rise and we have to act we have to rise and take back our streets rise and go back to loving, caring, and giving our lives as jars of clay to the God who loves, calls, and beckons each of us to continue to nurture a deep, intimate relationship with God, creation, and our neighbor. And it is possible because of Jesus Christ who did more action and talking than sitting and watching. Jesus did not mind risking his body all for the sake of building up walls of salvation and fairness and righteousness for all people in his day. It is possible, Jerusalem, because if we are children of God in flesh in Jesus, then through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible, but we have to want to continue to nurture our faith while holding to God's, uh, to God's hands which are upon us. And I got to close this message, but there is a story of a man who modeled in my life what it means to nurture a relationship with God. God while holding to God's hands which was upon this man's life and can I share with you a little bit of this man's story uh, this man was born in Richmond Virginia's Church Hill community this man did not have uh, much and he didn't come from a lack of luxury this man was unable to finish his elementary education. He could not read and he could not write. However, despite his limitations, he had a business mind and he held to God's unchanging hand to help him and lead him and guide him. And one day, while shining shoes outside of the Department of Education building down town in Richmond, Virginia, he met a beautiful woman by the name of Elizabeth Daniels, and they got together.
together and after a short courtship they blended their families together and they raised ten children they didn't live in a lap of luxury they lived in a home with only deep three bedrooms but as I was growing up I'm talking about my grandfather Henry Luther Griffin and growing up when I would come to see my grandfather I would see a man who didn't mind getting down on his knees I would see a man sitting at a table with his wife reading to him the holy scriptures I saw a man willing to use his voice and he sang all around Richmond with his group of 50 years named the Richmond Diamonds. I'm talking about a man who by societal standards he, he wasn't much of nothing but he knew how to nurture his relationship with God as he held to God's unchanging hand and he even when uh, cancer uh, had ravaged his body I remember one day uh, going to see my grandfather and he was in the bed he couldn't be, he couldn't get out the bed no more he couldn't walk but he said come here baby boy let me tell you something and I said uh, yes sir grandpa and he told me uh, that as long I feel like preaching here as long as you hold to the hands of God everything you need God will supply and good morning Jerusalem I thank you for this opportunity but I came to tell somebody that you gotta hold on to God's hands hold on to the hands that woke you up this morning you gotta nurture and hold on to the hands of the one who has guided you the dangerous scene and unseen you gotta hold to the hand of the one who healed your body when the doctor said it was over but I know another man who held on to his father's hands even when uh, they beat him uh, and they spit on him and they treated him like a common criminal but he held on to his father's hand and he has he died yes he yes he did uh, and they put him in that old grave but it kept holding to his hand as a matter of fact uh, he said into thy father's hand I commend my spirit and yes he died on Friday and yes uh, he died stayed in the grave all night Friday and all night Saturday but early, I said early, Sunday morning the hands of God raised Jesus with all power the power to help us walk right power today to help us talk right power today to help us hold to God's unchanging hand and is there anybody listening to me they got a made of man come hell or high water you're gonna hold unchanging hand. You're not going to let go. You're not going to throw in the towel. But you're going to hold to God's unchanging hand. And if you're going to hold to his hands, God's unchanging 
Christian hand. If you're going to build your homes on things eternal and hope to God's unchanging hand, can you see it? Yes, I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hands because God's hands that are upon each of us is the source is the power, is the hands that we can grip that was upon Nehemiah to help him to continue to go and rebuild, to help him to continue to nurture and rebuild and refortify the walls of the city, his people, his community. Restore decency, restore love, restore grace and mercy. And it's those same hands of God and fleshed in Jesus as we walk through this dark midnight that is seemingly looming over us in 2020. I want to admonish you, Jerusalem. I want you to hold to those hands. I want you as a congregation, as a fellowship of believers, of baptized believers, as sisters and brothers, collectively, individually, to continue to nurture your relationship with God. And you can only do that, my sister, my brother, by first acknowledging that you need salvation, acknowledging that you are not saved, that you need to make a personal profession of faith. And if that is you, my sister, my brother, repeat these words, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. Lord Jesus, save me. I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. I believe that he lived. I believe that he died. I believe that he rose. I believe that he's coming for my soul one day. Fill me, Lord Jesus, with the precious Holy Spirit that, will, that is the comforter, our, my lead and my guide. God, thank you for saving me, Lord Jesus. I confessed that today, by faith in the Christ, I am saved. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. If that was you, my brother, my sister, or you want to rededicate and you want to join Jerusalem, or you want to be a candidate for baptism uh, with the Jerusalem Baptist Church, you can contact them at jbcministries.org uh, backslash contact jbcministries.org black backslash contact or jbc doswell on facebook or you can call the church at 804-876-3460 804-876-3460 i pray that the lord has blessed you with this word. And again, I want to challenge you, Jerusalem, as a congregation and members that make up the congregation, the baptized believers of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to admonish you and, and encourage you and challenge you to continue to nurture your faith with God while holding to the hand of God, which is upon each of us. Thank you for this opportunity, and I pray God will continue to bless you and keep you. Let us pray now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we could ever ask or think to the only wise God who is able, who is the power source to give us the strength to continue to nurture our faith with God whose hands are upon us. To you, God, be all glory, dominion, majesty and power henceforth now and forevermore god bless you and may heaven smile upon you